In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. podcast of vundablog.com the home of whatever the podcast that hails to the chief but not the commander in chief we hail to the one and only chief Bruce Campbell <laughs> I was gonna be like uh do you mean uh hail to the king no, I thought you meant like that well, superhero, the, the chief, you know, the guy that... Apache there. chief? Apache chief. That's because I was thinking about Apache chief. I'm going to transition into Apache chief. <laughs> e, not to But then I thought that might be inappropriate. Because you'd be like, whoa, why are you going to that racial territory of... Apache chief. Apache chief. Listen, Apache chief exists whether we like it or not, so... I think, you I agree. Know. And then later in his uh, career, they reinvented him. They and, did. Uh, for Justice League Unlimited. Oh. And they called him Long Shadow to try to make it less uh, on the nose. That almost sounds... Because <laughs> Apache Chief is like doubling down on like Indian Indian. Oh no, it's super offensive. <laughs> it is. It's very offensive. It like, is. Like extra Indian. But I couldn't help but be hail to the Chief and then I, I don't know, just because we always talk about comics and stuff, I'm like, oh, do you mean Apache yeah. Chief? But I couldn't even remember his name. I could also be what? saying hail to the Chief, aka the man with the plan, Stanley. That's true. No. Bless gone. His, rest, rest in peace, Stan. Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. We've lost a few people. We've lost a few people. We lost um, Gloria Katz, who wrote American Graffiti and helped make Star Wars. What yeah, Star we'll be Wars. talking about that on our next Rebel Order yes, in the Hollywood will. Holocron section. And we lost George H.W. Bush, Ron Hell, motherfucker. What? I'm sorry, that was... Uh... We lost George H.W. Bush, who is famous for... Giving Dana Carvey the chance to have some great impressions of that's him. That's true, that's true. So, that's that's really amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, who, else, who, who else do you want to talk about that's dead right now? I don't know how we lost. Are we doing an in memoriam? Should we bring up the Oscar music? Like, Stop giving me editing work to do again. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. We're not doing that. <laughs> I am your host, Steven. And I am Danielle. And we Should are I just start calling myself Danny? If you want to represent yourself as a Danny, a D-A-N-I. Sure, I am a Danny. You can. Call me Danny from That's now on. That's usually what I call you. That is true. That is what if you it's call not me. some weird nickname. Everybody calls me Danny on the internet because I'm cool on the internet. Damn. In real life, not so much. In, in real life, you're an L. <laughs> a Danny L. Daniela. Oh, Daniela. God. They love to do that. Um, so we are in the Vunda Cave, hanging out with Morty and, uh, Xena in the lower, uh, Cozy Caves, and, uh, Rusty and Duke are up here above. Hello, Rusty's Rusty. the only one that's awake that's looking at us. He's <laughs> trying to see if we've forgotten about the popcorn we made. <laughs> so that he could steal some. He's like, I'm just gonna nonchalantly scratch my neck. Then I'm going to so lay by the hear, microphone. If you hear crunching sounds. Oh, oh, no, Rusty, don't. Oh, oh, he's, he's, he's getting fly. the fly right in front of the mic. Yeah, he's ready. He's like, this thing's gone. Rusty's a master bug catcher, and right before we recorded, Danny was like, I think there's a mosquito or something in here. He loves what they call sky raisins. Oh my god. Oh, he's going down. You gotta get up to get down sometimes. So, Rusty's in action. Rusty Venture, he is our fourth dog. I put him in the fourth dog slot, right? Fourth dog? Right? Yeah. He's like fourth record. meal from Taco Bell. Yeah. He's fourth dog. Oh, there you go. That's because he's a chihuahua. Four. It's all Oh, no. Beautiful. I didn't even think about that. Beautiful symmetry. Yo, quiero Taco Bell. 
Rusty has a tremendous personality. Yes, he does. He has a very chihuahua personality. But he likes to snap at you and grab your finger and tug you and force you to pet him. And <laughs> he is just super adorable. And he has it's to be so hard in to... control. Yeah, you realize how quickly the little dogs just turn into absolute little shits. Because it's just so easy to let them. Because <laughs> they're tiny and... They don't do that much damage, and, you know, it, they're kind of, like, easy to just kind of walk away from because they're so small. But, yeah, I mean, he's got a really big, like, small dog complex. But it's not our fault. He came like that because yeah, he's actually... He came fully formed. He came, he's actually older than we imagined. Um, we thought that he was only a year, but it turns out that he's closer to three to four years old, so... And he's, his chihuahuan blood is so strong. <laughs> and, I mean, the fact that he wasn't um, uh, snipped. Oh, he kept before, all that. Yeah, he kept all of that. Machismo. He has all that machismo. Mm. running. Everything's just running against his little dog. Yeah. But he's honestly, this. he's so sweet. Morty and Rusty are at the end of their uh, heartworm treatment, and they're doing better. Oh, no, yes. Rusty needs to come up. Here you go. All right. Get up there. <laughs> My hunting is over. Good he job, Rusty. Good job. He caught this guy raising. Uh, so they're doing better, thank God. Yeah, it's really awesome. And thank uh, Crossroads Vet. And uh, I don't know if stuff. Steven's put up the coffee. That I did. Made. It's been up. You did? Okay. Well, no one's donated, and that's fine. It's been up, but hey, we're still taking money. We're still taking money. We still, you know, lost some, some arms and legs, so it was a good time. <laughs> Um, so today's show, other than to tell you that Morgan Rust are doing fantastic. Which is awesome. And that we're doing pretty okay. How are we doing? I think, um... You started the how you doing section. How you doing? I'm doing... I did start the how you doing section. I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing a little bit better than I was, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um... Yeah. Oh, there's a death. Yeah, just, Danny had a death in the family. I did. My grandfather so, died. Um, my, my father's dad. Um, he was a really awesome guy. I actually flew down to Trinidad for the first time in 26 years. Holy moly. Yeah. To see him, uh, well, to see him off. And also, I needed to go back to Trinidad. My grandmother lives there. Um, she just turned 90, uh, last week. No, the week before, I'm sorry. Um, Thanksgiving week. She turned 90 years old. Um, I got to see my aunts, I got to see family that I haven't seen in a very long time, and that was really, um, pretty amazing, and, and that was worth it, and then I got to see my grandfather off, and, and that was also, uh, very much worth it, so. This is Danielle. This is Steven. And we're here to tell you about the Voondacast, official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever. We talk comics, movies pop culture dogs miami drivers spies everything and anything awesome that we love we talk about on this podcast every monday at four eastern time only here on the radioactive underground radiate, radiate. and we're back and one day in the blooper section you will understand why we just cut abruptly <laughs> out my conversation. Um, but I don't so think that... So, our condolences to yeah. uh, Danny, mm -hmm. who also recently traveled to Trinidad um, and visited the, the island under, uh, you know, less than uh, ideal circumstances. Yes. But you did travel, so way to go. Yeah, I did. Traveling's awesome. I'm doing that successfully. Good. Yeah, I did. I made it back and forth. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I spent most of uh, November watching Joe Bob Briggs' The Last Drive-In on Shudder. I'm looking forward to the Thanksgiving Marathon. Mm -hmm. Love Blood Rage, Dead or Alive, Hills Have Eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the uh, earlier Last Drive-In shows. And have just been binging also on YouTube. On uh, older Joe Bob Briggs Monster Vision clips and different things, hmm. and I think that I had like watched him like inadvertently. Growing was he ever up. recommended? Oh, okay. So this because he was on TNT for like oh. a large part of the of the nineties. Up until two thousand, he was on TNT, and he would introduce movies late at night. 
We don't, I mean, you know, that's kind but, of... But, but he was always just an interstitial, so I never even mm-hmm. gave him any thought or yeah. mind. But <clears throat> some, there's something about watching a film with him on Shudder that is just like this like delicious and this like, is something that, safety blanket. Yeah, this is something that uh, the newer like you know generations don't know about the all the late night shows that the people used to just host. Yeah, the horror hosts. You know, the horror hosts and and even even on AMC, even not horror classic movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, they the it cure. used to be they they would do things where they would just have big marathons of movies, um, and. You know, in the middle of the night when they had nothing else to air but just reruns. Or in the day, like Turner Classic Movies used to play movies all day. And then they always have like, you know, basically a host that gives the perspective on the movie that you might not have. Yeah. And um, and And that's kind of died out now, you know, with the advent. And from what I'm hearing is TNT would literally see a difference in uh, in the ratings. Oh, yeah? They would see it. That if he wasn't hosting the movies, the ratings would be down, Hmm. would be different for, would be lower than if they he was, I wonder, so it was so it was a small investment to make those movies have think, higher ratings. Do you think this is just a streaming issue? Like now that kids want internet and stuff like that, like that they don't have that anymore. Or do you think that it's more the the more and really that the the actual channels phase them out, and so now everyone's used to not having them. Well, I just think the channels don't want to waste time. Yeah. With them and don't want to push that, but I think there's an audience for it. Yeah. And Shudder thinks there's an audience for it, and thinks that there's an audience for, for using it promotionally, mm-hmm. which is what they're doing. Yeah. To kind of make like these live events where you have to. So is he gonna do one watch. for Mandy? They did one for well, they did they did one for Thanksgiving, post mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. They're doing one right before Christmas, mm-hmm. and they'll do another marathon of very Joe Bob Christmas, and then basically. For the dinners of death for Thanksgiving, kind of, oh. they had Shudder going. I mean, I mean, had a what's called um, Discord, Discord mm-hmm. that I logged into, so you can talk and interact uh, mm-hmm. with a community during the movie. If you don't and know then on Twitter, Di- oh, I'm sorry. If you don't know what Discord is, Discord is uh, the big deal chat um, app group chat app it's, for the it populace. Started, it originated with gamers. Um, you can play games on it as well, but now it's kind of becoming big. I know for me in my Star Wars fandom stuff, I use it a lot. Um, for different things um, because it's very um, useful and you can make all different kinds of channels within a, a community and there's different rules for each channel and mm-hmm. it's just a very it's a very easy way to upload things and it keeps things very simple so if you don't know what discord is i'm promoting discord so. whoa danny certified discord i promote what i like yep so mm. that's what i've been up to so ca- that kind of excites me blanket. because could would they ever bring back Elvira then? Like that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Because they could. I know they have this guy, and you they like could. him, but I'm really not as into like red. No, neck. I know, I know. Yeah, his aesthetic. <laughs> his aesthetic and his you know. But he I just would be rambles way on about, into Elvira. No, there's times where he's just rambling on about like the transportation system of the 1970s in California. <laughs> For like five minutes and you're like, bro, let's get to this movie. Hey, but if, that's part of the fun. Exactly. They give it's him, like being with that like annoying uncle. If they give him those that five says minutes. A cool, says a cool funny thing once in a while, but well, you gotta, you know, get through smooth. See, stuff. I don't need to, I, I don't want the annoying uncle. I want the cool aunt mm-hmm. who is like, wears black so. black lipstick and talks to me about all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, no, but I'm serious though. What Do you think that they might be leaning towards bringing back Elvira or another kind of horror hostess because it would be cool to see a female version of them. I'm sure they they would. I don't know if they will mm-hmm. because I know Elvira she kind of yeah. you know keeps is trying to keep her brand uh, higher value and mm-hmm. you know she, she wants to get paid when she dresses up like Elvira. True. Like big money nowadays. So yeah because there's a lot know. of work for her to do it. She has to um, there's a lot of makeup and everything. Yeah. Apparently she's in a, a Fellini movie. Oh Yeah. Apparently she plays like a girl who like blows a kiss, and that was like the first thing she ever did in Hollywood. Oh wow! But she was in a Fellini movie in Italy. Hmm. That's a beautiful. To this day. Pull up shows Fellini. Elvira, Mistress yeah. of Darkness, is one of my favorite movies of all time, and it is also one of the worst movies ever. But and that's all you need to know about the name. But it's but I mean bom, bom. it's one of the worst movies in the best way. Oh yeah. And I cannot get enough of it, and I watch it. I used to watch. I, th- I think it, when I was in college, I watched the movie constantly. I was like, I had it on. I have it on DVD. You can see it. Yeah, I tried to watch the sequel, and that was just too awful to exist. I couldn't do it. 
I didn't know that was a. It's not like a story, story sequel. It's just a. No, another it's, adventure, just, it's just another no? adventure, but it's just terrible. And, like, you can tell the diminishment in quality. Like, in the first movie, they actually had, like, some sort of a budget. Mm-hmm. But the second one, they were like, no, put this on yeah. Channel 500. Now we know our budget we can afford. Yeah, that was a cat. I heard it, too. Yeah. Or it was someone in another room with a cat or something. I don't know. Yeah, there are cats outside. <laughs> Shh, quiet, dogs. Quiet. <laughs> Zena, make noises. Zena, make noises for the ad. Zena, we need ads? It's time for ads? It's time for ads? You bet your bottom dollar it is. It's Zena of the Midnight Hounds with Duke and Rusty, also of the Midnight Hounds, and Steven, owner of the Midnight Hounds. Okay, Zena, I'll get to her and Danny <laughs> of Ad Bundacast and What's also that? owner of the Midnight House. Uh, Morty isn't feeling so well right now because Morty and Rusty are undergoing heartworm treatment and Morty's having a bad reaction at the moment. So thoughts and prayers for Morty are appreciated. <laughs> and if you guys want to donate cold hard cash, we opened up a coffee, uh, K-O hyphen fi.com slash vlundacast the link on the podcast if you guys want to throw us a couple shekels towards uh, Morty and Rusty's growing vet bill <laughs> yeehaw but this is happy ads we're doing fun things today so Danny and I when we were at Outcon we, uh, we made a friend named Wilner Yes. And uh, we helped him uh, get on the road when he was unpacking from the con. We had a great time at the Love Outcon. Excited to go next year. Outcon's always a fun, positive place yeah. to be. I believe if you check the Outcon website, you'll find out that they were nominated for some awards for having one of the best LGBT gatherings That's in uh, all of the convention them and handled them. Um, and if you want to support Smash.Miami, which is to help stop, to create more affordable housing in Miami, specifically for LGBTQ people who are in um, one of the most at-risk communities when it comes to housing in the city. You can go and you can have a good time and support a good cause. Every first Monday of the month, there's a gamely, there's a, gamely, there's a monthly, a monthly game night and party. That sounds like a little. All right. They're on Mondays. They have karaoke hosted by Miami's best drag queen, Tiffany T. Fantasia. Karaoke is free with a $10 tona- donation. They get a shade card and a drink. All donations go to the development of the first LGBT homeless shelter. Then on Wednesday, also at the Hotel Gathering, I believe, from 8 to 12, every third Wednesday, is game night. And you guys can go out, join the local community, and uh, check out smash.miami. If you guys want any more information or want to help out or see what you can do to help out our local community, check out, you can email justin at smash.miami. I'd also like to plug um, friends of the podcast, Lisa Hammer and Levi Wilson. Their movie, The Sisters Plots, is on Amazon Prime right now, and it is a hilarious musical. It's a hoot! About three sisters living in the lap of luxury, trying to have suitors that are coming to woo them away. The neighbor's children are rushing to go check out The Sisters Plots. All right, Zena and Duke, we're going to watch it in a little bit. Relax. But we just got one more ad. So I want you guys to go on Patreon, support Lavender Rangers Patreon. He was on our Power Rangers episode. I want you guys to support Flush Studios Patreon. They're making an awesome horror movie called Greywood's Plot that we're getting a producer credit on for our support. And Rebel Without a Crew Season 1 premieres Sunday, November 18th. Tune in to El Rey. Check it out. Watch Lucha Underground on El, on El Rey so that you can interact with D Rock, aka at Biopinic, 
on the Twitter. I am at Son of Us Escadero on the Twitter. Danny is at Cardigan Vixen. Aren't you? Yes. So if you want to see what crazy thing she's going to change her profile header name to. Okay. It's Halloween themed right now. She's been a, uh, what is it, Coxwagger Inspector. <laughs> Um, she's had haunted titties. <laughs> she's she's had a lot of monikers through the years. Spooky uh, noodles. Smoky, spooky noodles. Spooky noodles. Yeah. Zena. Okay, and check out our Instagram at Wonder Vlog okay. and at Midnight Hounds. Oh, yes. At Midnight Hounds for cute pictures of Zena. I know Zena. I'm almost done with the ad. Zena's like, finish this ad so I can go out and play. Okay, I think that's it. And we're back. Because cats are possibly having Sorry, sex. Sorry, guys. We have a lot of interruptions tonight. This is oh, what happens when you don't have a studio. It's one of those nights. Is it what happens when you don't have a studio? Is yeah. that, yeah. It's an entire production facility that would have kept this away from us. I'm pretty yeah. sure it would have. We wouldn't have heard cats going Row! at 10 o'clock at night. No. <laughs> Even in studios, homeless people like. Oh, yeah. Barge in. They're like, let me take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, I can't heard... afford to eat. So I don't know. <laughs> yes, I, I've truly heard of that homeless scourge, the barge in to use toilets. Hi. Okay. So, Shudder. Uh... So, I love Shudder. You do. I wish we could just become like an official Shutter podcast because they have Shutter oh, podcasts. That would be so cool. And then we could just like retire. And can we just do? I just suck wanna, Shutter's dick all can day. Can we please? become an official Shutter podcast and a Star Wars podcast? The the Star Wars podcast would never hire us because of things like suck your dick. But you know. Yo, Star Wars! I'll suck your dick so good. <laughs> Stop it! But In a yeah. metaphorical sense, that I love it. Hey, we can have. Two different kinds. There are people who do two different levels yeah. of podcasts. They do R rated and PG thirteen. Yeah, okay. Time. Those are my dreams. Shutter podcast officials Whoa. and Star Wars official podcasters. Crazy. Well, not official, like, but like you know, friends of Star Wars because they have those like unofficial f- official people. You know, if Rebel Force Radio can get was allowed to be an affiliate, was yeah. that allowed to to be on a panel for Star Wars Celebration? Yeah. And they're the living worst, Whoa. then we can do it. Danny's fighting words. <laughs> they're the living worst. So we are finna catch up on some television reviews. That's okay. right. Okay. We're doubling, doubling down. Oh no. Going right. down so to Dublin like a, town. So we're doing like a lightning reviews. round of reviews? We're doing some television reviews, yeah. Like a lightning so round. So Danny recently watched American Horror Story. I did. The latest season, which oh, is called Apocalypse. Oh, is horror themed? Yes, it is. Did I'm you know? excited. I figured it out. Saw. You guys, he literally just was like 20 minutes ago. He's like, hey, I want to record a podcast. I'm like, what about? He's like, Yeah, because sometimes when I tell you the topics, you like get like, you know, freaked out and you know, you get a little hesitant. Whatever. Okay. So I just got to, you know, release. Yes, I did just recently watch American Horror Story. Apocalypse. So how was American Horror Story Apocalypse? <sighs> American Horror Story was Apocalypse. Was it a rebuke of American Horror Story? Okay. Was it a salvation? I will say, um, I think in the in the I've watched most of the American horror stories. Um, I did not finish Roanoke. You finished Freak Show? I finished Freak Show. I finished everyone except for Roanoke. I just couldn't I couldn't I don't know. I wanna finish Roanoke, but it's really not on my top. Is Roanoke set in like the witch times? No. Roanoke is a is, is that a, the alien one? No. It, Roanoke, is, um, <laughs> Roanoke has a strange format because it's um, about ghosts and mm. poltergeists, but it's kind of set in a reality TV-based sort of thing, like ghost adventures kind of thing. Oh, it's the Ghost Hunters one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Ghost Hunters one. The thing, okay, That's stupid. I will give I will give American Horror Story this and give them props, is they're always trying different things, mm-hmm. and I guess it's... You know, and then that's not a bad thing, but it does sort of feel like sometimes they just sort of throw things against the wall to see what sticks. Um, and at this point in the in the seasons, we've kind of seen that it's a blunt instrument. You know, like there's sometimes there's moments where you see something deeper, but it really at the end of the day ends up kind of always being just like, okay, and then murder and death and bye. Ooh, look at this twist that you saw coming a mile away. You know. Um, so, I will say that American Horror Star- 
Story Apocalypse is my third favorite season. My first ones being, um, no, Coven. fourth favorite, fourth favorite, fourth favorite. <laughs> Maybe it's gunning for third place, like with another one. So my first favorite is, I think in terms of the most successful season, is American Horror Story Asylum. Because Whoa. Asylum, and Asylum did That's have the aliens. Second one? That's the second season. Asylum manages to be absolutely terrifying and mm-hmm. also kind of unlike many of the other seasons of American Horror Story, have a through line and have a plot thread that kind of follows itself and knows what it's doing and has something pretty dark and disturbingly interesting to say. Like a lot of what is the most terrifying part of American Horror Story Asylum is Asylum is is the reality part. Yeah. Um and so that one's I honestly think is the best season that they've done. And then the second my second favorite is American Horror Story Coven. And then so my third, I guess my two thirds favorites are Murder House and American Horror Story Apocalypse. I love American Horror Story Hotel. It's beautiful, but it like has like no plot. It's just like what's going on, okay. It's like wait for Lady Gaga to show up and Yeah, and know. look she's a vampire, everything's sexy and gorgeous, and there's like blood and neon lights everywhere. Whoa. Um, it looks like one of her concept albums, you know, just like come to life. So, American Horror Story Apocalypse. Do you have a uh, favorite uh-huh. aspect or moment in the, from this season? My favorite moment is definitely finding out. Honestly, this was my favorite moment. Finding out that, um, and I guess, are we going to spoil things or? Yo, spoilers for American Horror Story. That shit happens, right? Yeah, okay. It's been on uh, for like two months, right? No, because I know some people are really like anti spoiler right? But okay, we're spoilers. Spoilers, okay, spoilers. If you don't want to get spoiled, then you're going to have to fast forward like a minute and a half, probably two minutes. Or this whole podcast, because we're just going to keep talking about things and spoiler. Eh. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know, bro. Come on. Live your life. <laughs> this is America. You downloaded this. Um. So, so um. my favorite moment is finding out that... The witches were part of this, honestly. Like well, finding that out it tied that, back. that it tied back to Coven, yeah. um, and that it was going to be witches versus yeah. the Antichrist. Like that was really cool. Um, I will say Cody Fern as the Antichrist, Michael Langdon, definitely stood out the season as all of my thirsty girls on Tumblr became and Twitter became immediately obsessed with him and how he's this gorgeous like dark angel, wow. uh, fallen angel, looking motherfucker. Um, he is definitely one of the highlights of the season. He's a really strong actor and he works. And the thing is he works with sometimes thin material for his character and makes it compelling. Um, and so, yeah, like, like a lot of men. And he seemed to really capture the imaginations of, of people like on the internet and stuff. Yeah, and exactly. Tumblr, yeah, like, yeah. He really like. Well, so the Thirsty Girls, yeah. And I know, but I'm saying that's not, you know, yeah. it's not just because he's pretty. No. It's, it's because he's he's good. He's good at playing bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and Michael Langton's a comp... Well, you know, for a while, he's a complicated character. The thing about American Horror Story, it always kind of seems to happen with them, is they don't know how to stick a landing. You know, they, they start strong, and then they just always kind of seem to struggle. And I honestly also think they're sort of like cynical, everything sucks and then you die format, wow. worked against them in this case. So... Basically, like, the story, you know, we have these two opposing factors, the witches, and then it's supposed to be, you think it's the warlocks, but it's actually not. It's actually, like, the devil. Um, and there are two characters on either side. There's Michael Langdon, and then there's um, Mallory. And then they're just such interesting characters, and you want something to go on there. Mm-hmm. Now, some people wanted romance. I didn't necessarily even need romance. Just something. There's, you know, I thought there was going to be kind of a dichotomy that was going to be really sort of interesting, and then the way they ended it was so disappointing and silly, and 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 once you and the thing too is once they introduced this huge Deus Ex Machina, this huge um, thing like in the second to last episode, I was like, okay, this is the Deus Ex Machina. Like they're going to use this. This is the way this is going to happen. I just didn't realize they were going to do such a silly job of using it um like because uh, that's the thing even though it was an obvious deus, deus ex machina they could have like done something cool with it but they didn't they did something very silly and unfortunately yeah it didn't end on a strong i i think that uh you know i've, I've revised the the julian end of movie experience uh 
what is it called? The uh, you know ethos that the last yeah. you know closing minutes are, are, are where people walk yes. away from. But I think like double down that on horror. Yeah. If you don't if you don't stick that landing yeah. after your backflip. Yeah. It's not even worth it. No, it's like so true. all the best and most iconic yeah. horror movies, the last like thirty seconds to a minute are always iconic. Friday yeah. the Thirteenth, mm-hmm. Rosemary's Baby, yeah. The Thing, uh, dare I say, Hereditary, yeah, um, The Babadook. Like the last couple minutes are yeah. usually some of the most no, interesting, it's, it's the iconic, total, it's like the total tonal. Truth. The thing about a horror is. It's it's gotta have a, it has to stick, because especially since so many horrors are mysteries. Mm-hmm. So if you get to that reveal, and it's mm-hmm. disappointing, it's like, ugh, why did I waste my time? Even to like do? scream, just yeah. like the killer coming back for one last mm-hmm. like murder before everyone gets to stumble off into the sunset or we sunrise. Tell, we should tell Julian one day that we're like Thank we you. use his we use his uh yeah. But it's true though. He's right. Like I, the more I watch things, the more I'm like, yeah. Like he's right. The la- the end about this one thing. He's the e- yes about this one thing. The end of a something, whether it's a movie or TV show, whatever it has. If it's good, you forget every mm-hmm. bad thing. The, if there was bad stuff, you forgot all of it, and you just pay attention to the end. And so yeah, like that's the problem with American Horror Story is they so frequently do not stick their endings Mm -hmm. and that's the problem with it so you kind of spend your 10 season your 10 episodes and you're like excited to see where it's going and then it always kind of just goes to this place that you're just like why are you why aren't you brave enough to do something different or what or is it maybe your viewpoint that it's so cynical and it's always about more blood and more guts you know that it's kind of it stops you from really going to a more interesting and nuanced place you know so yeah, that's my sure. review. And the second show we're going to talk about, I don't want to give too many spoilers for it. Sure. But I do want to say that it kind of did stick the landing, which mm-hmm. it was hard to do, which is the show Castle Rock mm-hmm. on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Danny actually watched it as it was released on Hulu week to week, which is... I think still, even with binge watching and everything, mm-hmm. I had to say the week to week. It's like, hard. It's hard, but I think it's the most satisfying. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Because it really gives you time well, to digest every episode and like simmer with it. Because I still remember the show very vividly, and yeah. I feel like if we had binged it all in a day and a half, we would miss things. It would. It, it wouldn't have stuck. As long as it's I hard. think well, what I, I find interesting and I've, and I've seen people talk about this and I, and I do see that see it shows that are it's almost like a shows are designed to be binge watched now mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's not something where you it's no longer where okay you're binge watching it just because you really like it like like but you kind of know that okay this was a week to week format thing and it doesn't feel like that. But no, like, there's a lot of shows, especially on Netflix, where if you had to watch this week to week, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd like it as much. Like, I won't lie. I think something like Stranger Things, mm-hmm. week to week, I'm not sure. Like, it was compelling. If it would hold It was up, compelling. Totally. Yeah, it was compelling. Yeah. But the first few episodes were kind of slow. And were kind of like, if you had to follow that on Fox week to week, would you keep coming back? You might not come back. You know? Sometimes the week to week format gives them the oomph to sort of push for that, okay, yeah, the sizzle, think... what do they call it? The sizzle at the end or whatever, yeah, where they like uh, yeah. get you in? Yeah, you know? I don't, yeah, I, I don't think Stranger Things would work. Yeah, it wouldn't. It would it's something that's designed... Especially because Stranger Things, like... It's almost like a... It's what it really is, is it's a miniseries. Mm-hmm. It's not a show. It's a miniseries. With ten chapters. But I really like Stranger Things. I but love Stranger Things. It's thin. It is. Even though there's been like 20 hours of story, it's yeah. still extremely thin. Like yeah. They haven't really given everyone like yeah. Stranger, characterization. A lot of, a lot of Stranger scenes, Things you know is, I mean? about, is about that kind of mystery unfolding. And the tone. And the tone. And yeah. And then the, and then the, the nostalgia mind. And the tone too. is satisfying. Yeah. And, and also too... They were really blessed to find some 
amazing kids. Yep. Like, I think so much of that show is carried yep. on these kids and their personalities. And, and I, the unsung yeah. heroes of Hollywood are the casting directors who yeah. find all these people, mm-hmm. and then they never get the thank you, they never no, get the kudos, they never, they never get, get the, the credit. The stuff they deserve. Um, you Don't know? have any Oscars? Come on, guys. Yeah. Like, and, and, and the kids and the cast, because, okay, think about season one Stranger Things. If Winona Ryder hadn't been absolutely off the wall batshit crazy in that season, would would it have been as interesting to watch? To kind of watch her fall apart? Like, that was part of the compelling stuff, was yeah. to see her fall apart and to see her, you know, like, oh, where's my son? And, like, everyone else is like, bitch, you cray. And she's like, no, I'm not cray. I know. And, like, you know. Yep. And us talking about Stranger Things is our way of saying that Castle Rock Yes, I'm sorry. Is awesome. Is awesome. Okay, so sorry. So to, get, to go back, Castle it's... Rock worked as a as a week to week, and it, and he said it's their each story was com- each chapter each episode was compelling in its own right, mm-hmm. and they knew that, and because they had that week to week format, they really stuck the landing on some of these episodes. Like, there's a uh, middle of the season one, the qu- queen, what the, what was it called White Queen or? Let me look it up for you. Um. I think it's called Queen or something like that or something the the Queen or the White Queen, and it is um. It is starring the amazing Sissy Spacek, aka Carrie. Mm-hmm. It is called the Queen. Yes. Yes, the Queen. And season one, episode seven. And it's um, and it is in the middle of the season, and so what it's used for is, you know how in TV shows they have that one episode that's sort of the calm before the storm of like, you're about to get a ton of exposition and a ton yeah. of stuff happening. They used it for that purpose. Um, and it's very beautiful and tragic. But their scene that, their yeah. episode that is their like like heater for their big episode is still a ton of exposition. It's yeah, it is. And it's also like you know, has like some like time travel element and and just the whole show manages to jump around and play with some different sort of tones see, of yeah. horror. Yeah. And that the Queen was like their like most like personal I really liked sort it. of horror. I really liked how much it captured the spirit of Stephen King. And I know it wasn't written by Stephen King. It was inspired, obviously, not just inspired, but homaging Stephen King. And But I really think that it captured Stephen King and that sort of strangeness that he seems to find in everyday things, you know? And so, yeah, I, I think that it succeeded in that, in doing that. Um, I do think sometimes the myth of the whatever it is, the time travel, the realities, sometimes they got a little bit, like, too, like overly complicated or muddled or whatever. But well, I just think that they were trying to... Especially They were since, trying to replicate that, that novel thing. Yeah. Where you you go down dead ends yeah, yeah, and then yeah. come back to but I don't know your main I, theory. I don't know if that always works in the show. Mm-hmm. And especially since apparently season two is not going to deal with any of these characters. It's going to be totally new. Are they going to deal with the same concept, this realities concept, this fractured realities concept, you know? So, I don't know. It's just, they put a lot, and then you don't get a lot of exposition, which I guess, you don't always need a lot of exposition to kind of understand something, but, it, yeah, I mean, and, and I do like that it, it, I don't know, should we spoil the end? I guess, we, no, we shouldn't spoil the end. Let's not spoil the end. I'll say this. You guys should watch Hulu, yeah. you can watch Future Man. I'll say you this, watch I Castle like, Rock. I liked how they ended it because it seemed like a show that couldn't just have this like pretty package ending. It needed mm-hmm. something a little bit muddled and complicated. And, a little, they they and had to make it gray. Yeah, very it gray. Be black and white. Very gray. And um, yeah. So it, yeah, it's a good show. It's, yeah. it's a good show. Yeah. It managed to elicit lots of different emotions of dread and you know, worry and and all of the emotions you want to feel when you're watching a show like this, it effectively pulled out of me. And it manages to hit, you know, these, these Stephen King tropes and references in a very smooth and natural way that if you're a dork, you'll see <laughs> the reference. 
Yeah. And if you're not, it's not going to be like, ha, 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 look, remember this or remember yeah. this? Or you don't so, feel dumb. You don't feel like you need to have read a whole bunch of books. Yeah, to understand anything. To understand that what's going on. I have ever, like, like, maybe like half a Stephen King book. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever read, I finished any Stephen King books. I've started a bunch of Stephen King books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never finished one. Um, <laughs> but I finished Castle Rock. And I have I read several Stephen King, King books, so... I'm a big, I'm a pretty big fan. Uh, I've watched several Stephen King films, I and I've watched him. his directorial work, Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. Tour de Force, the film scored by ACDC. You met Stephen King. I did. While she was in college. And oh, what a day it was. It was. It was a pretty um, interesting thing because we, I was actually supposed to see another author read, and then they I was like, called. I'll settle for Stephen God. No, yeah, they called me, and they're like, well. Unfortunately, I can't even remember the other author's name, but he was actually a pretty well-known author as well. <laughs> I burned that author's name out of my I mind. I burned that author's name out of my mind. Um, but they were like, well, unfortunately for you, Richard Ra 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 isn't going to make it. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, well, but we got a replacement. It's Stephen King. Do you still want to go? And I'm like, um, yes. And Stephen King, actually, what he did was he read a short story that later on became the novel that he published, The Cell. Um, no, not Cell, I'm sorry. Duma Key. Um, and, which is about a guy who's missing an arm, and stuff goes down. I did read that book, but yeah, he actually read that, he read the short story that, I guess, later became that story. Um, and then he also, then he signed everybody's stuff, and he was really awesome because he had a line out the door, and he signed everybody's things. And... He did this funny thing with my book. I, all I had was this ratty copy of Dreamcatcher mm-hmm. um, for him to sign. And um, he crossed out his printed name and signed over it. And it's always funny to me because it kind of looks like some counterfeiter signed mm-hmm. it. Like, Stephen King. But I, I, it's, yeah. He is really funny looking. He was wearing a baseball jacket because I think that's like his thing. He loves baseball or something. He was wearing like you know like a sports jacket, like a leather yeah, jacket, yeah. and he looked like a bird because he's kind of hunched over and he's got like his beak nose and his glasses and his hair. So he kind of looks like a very, um, you know, a, a very a, a, like strange raven. Like Perfect. he does, he does. I'm serious. He looks like a strange raven. And with his dark hair and his, like, hunched over and his beak. And then he's wearing, like, a sports jacket. He's just a very interesting character. But it was awesome to see him. And I had a good time meeting him. Um, it was definitely an experience I would uh, not trade. It was a great time. And I love seeing... I love... I don't know. I just love... I love going to a reading. Like, I wish I could do more readings. Because it's really cool to see authors read their work out loud. And yeah. hear how they tell the story. It's a special... Uh... It's a special thing. And the last show that we're going to talk about that is going to close out the show is a Netflix show Oh, that we watched during the Halloween season, The Haunting of Hill House, Oh, by oh, Mike oh, Flanagan, yeah. and starring his lovely wife, Katie Siegel, mm-hmm. who plays the badass Theo. We... I loved The Haunting of Hill House. Um, really wasn't expecting to get as over the moon or be as impressed by it. Oh, no way. At yeah. all. Especially because, like, you know, we've, it's based on the classic 1950s film, The Haunting of Hill House. It's which, based on the book. Which is in the public domain. And a book, apparently. Some words on a page, I don't know. It's based off uh, of the original book, which was I'm by sure. Shirley... Um, Hold on, I want to get her name because she's really cool. It is actually written by a woman, Whoa. which is um, not a common thing. Well, that's not true. I think that there's a no? lot of women story, story. women, yeah, women no, storytellers in horror. No, 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 I'm not talking about. No, I know there's a lot of women storytellers in horror. I mean, oh. TV shows and movies that get turned into stories. Are they based on well, Mary Shirley, Shirley Jackson? Well, the one that I I think. Is really hot to rip, whip in people's Mary Shelley. faces is Mary Shelley. Yeah, yeah but that that's one. You well, know what I'm saying? Fun. You know, so many other stories are. Um, yeah, but it's still a really good one. Of like, course, yes. It's like well, Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley is like the ma- She's like the originator of the 
of the horror. She's the original yeah. Elvira. She is. <laughs> that Mary Shelley. She is. She's like the originator of, 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 of modern horror as we know it, as the horror tale. She's a badass. Um, but yeah, Shirley Jackson is the name of the author. Um, I didn't, like, like you, I was not expecting to be as, first of all, as terrified as I was. Yep. I know that for a lot of people, ghosts really don't do anything to them, but ghosts do shit to me, and that show scared the crap out of me. You can ask Steven, I was screaming several times, yeah. not just at jump scares, there was just an overall sense of dread, um, and the thing, is, the thing that's really terrifying is, you're watching the show, and you keep feeling all the time that there's something staring at you. And then later on you learn, oh, there is always something there's staring at you. There's hidden ghosts everywhere. Because there's hidden ghosts everywhere. I'm literally getting chills just talking about this. There's hidden ghosts <coughs> in like every episode, at least two to three or more In reflections or in the background. In background shots. And that's why there's this amazing sense of constant dread because you are constantly being watched. Mm -hmm. And so you're scared of the stuff that's happening in front of you, but you're all not paying attention to the stuff that's behind you or behind the characters and you don't even realize oh my god they're everywhere and i think beyond the fact that this i think a lot what kind of jokingly people call it this is us with ghosts i don't watch this is us because i don't need cry porn like we're not hip no i'm not hip like that emotional but I, just, I don't want the cry porn resonance. because everyone talks about this is us as cry porn um so hill house is i guess the closest thing i'll get to this is us because it also is, it has you on one end so scared, mm -hmm. but it also has you weeping because yeah, you're, you're invested in these characters. These characters are so, they're so well written and they're so, in, you get invested in them so quickly. Um, I actually think that it's and, possible uh, if we're going by our, our test of mm -hmm. can this be a week to week? I think Hill House could have been a week to week show. Do you think? I think yeah, so. I think I think I think it could have. There was enough. Held up. They had Sizzlers at the end that got you yeah. into the next episode yeah. in a way that was like really kind of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the. I think it was effective. Like the first episode, slow, kind of. In the I beginning, think it was by effective. By the end of it, you're like, oh my god. I think it was effective, but yeah. I don't think a network would would, it would have allowed that show to be on TV. Yeah. Especially with like the drug. Yeah. The drug use angle, even though it's about mm. recovery. Uh, maybe but it's, it's just, also just... I mean, and, and especially the ending, too. Yeah. Not to spoil anything, but it's kind of nihilistic. It is, yeah. Sort of, and I feel like that's not... Yeah, because, um, no, well, I don't know, I don't... Shoot, we can't talk about it. I guess, can we have a spoiler section for this? Because... Uh, yeah, do you, do you want to have your spoiler section? I do, because I, I, I read something... Section? I read something pretty uh, disturbing about the ending. Um, yeah, the red thing? Yeah. So... Yeah, I heard it too. But spoilers, spoilers, these are the spoilers. Wait, Again. wait, wait, wait. But, okay, so go see Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. It's uh, by Mike Flanagan, who also directed Gerald's Game on Netflix, which is really good. And Hush. And he also directed uh, Absentia, was his first film, which we which saw we many saw, years ago. And that disturbed the crap out of us. So, yep. yeah, if I had known this was the same guy, I'd have been like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And, if and, I ever meet and, him, I'm going to And, just liter him. and literally just the way this show is uh is shot on some episodes really makes the show feel oh, yeah. like like on the level of like like a major motion picture major motion picture mm -hmm. like it transcends uh episode six television it's, yeah it does yeah it's a show but it's it, it, just, it just it goes bigger it's like it so feels just beautiful. amazing it is um and also before we jump in the spoiler section yeah i just like to point out that this film is shares show share this show mm -hmm. shares blood mm -hmm. with the amazing film 1999 Liam Neeson oh god The Haunting oh yeah it shares one drop that rarefied CGI ghost oh, air man. blood go back and watch that again Damn. it's terrible it's terrible yeah but when I was a kid that was like oh this is horror movies yeah I can handle horror movies <laughs> You have no idea what you're walking like, into, it's like, Steven. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an adult version of the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Yeah, like it is. Totally. It is. <laughs> Just go back in the fireplace. Oh. Uh, Perfect. Um, That's me. Make creepy noises. Stop. Yeah, get them on the show. No, creepy, creepy. stop making creepy noises. Okay, yeah. spoiler section really quick. Little did you know there's a ghost all along here. Spoilers, spoilers. These are the ghosts. 
Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Spoilers! Boo! <laughs> Just imagine, I'm loving it. That boo is like a, it's some angry old ghost that just like doesn't want to be bothered. But Why can't I just go to hell like a boo. normal spirit? Yeah. Uh, um, so the spoiler for the show, which definitely increases the why I wouldn't get picked by a network, is there's apparently some... Okay, at the end of the show, you think that um, only the father, the mother... And um, the youngest daughter now end up stuck in the house, um, in the- and dead in the red room. Um, and then at the end, you feel like okay, everyone else gets to escape; they all get to live and, and kind of yeah, they lives. get a happy ending. But and then you see their happy ending. Appa- yeah, you see their happy ending. And so apparently, one of the actors, the actor who played the eldest brother, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. Um, he was talking to Katie Siegel. And he's like, did you... Because the whole way you always knew that they were in the red room... Okay, so spoilers is the middle of this house is the heart. And at the heart of this house is this thing called the red room. The red room is like where they all... Basically, the house eats you. The house is a living thing. The energy of the ghosts sort of suck the energy of the people. And they um, very cleverly seed this in and keep it a mystery yes, at the same time. On the whole, exactly. They seed this in, but it's a mystery the whole time until the uh, amazing and shocking reveal. Thank you. The shocking reveal that um, that they were all in the red room at some point, and that the red room was different things to them. And we've seen this room multiple times on the show. We just never knew it was the fucking red room. Mm-hmm. I think Stephen kind of started to guess it, like because he was like, "Oh, it's his game room in the red room or something like that." I think yeah, in the treehouse. Yeah, the tree. Yeah, I'm saying like. Yeah, this like is oh, weird. this is we weird. Yeah, to these yeah. For these um, moments. And so you get this this d- this insane thing, that's like, oh my god, w- this whole time, this has been, this has been this, and the house has been feeding off the children, off everyone. Um, so the oldest brother, Stephen Crane, played by Michael Huisman, um, he... He's wearing, like, red sneakers and gets with his wife? Something, I don't know, he's, he, the, the actor said that he saw at the end when they all escaped the red room, uh, oh, but basically whenever they're in the red room, the hint is there's always something red in the room with them, mm-hmm. and that's how you know they're in the red room. So when he's talking to Katie Siegel, and, who plays, um, the Theo. middle, Theo, the middle daughter... Um, Badass Fonzie of Hell yeah. <laughs> He's talking to her and says, oh, if there's a red, like, a candle or something. Red cake. Red cake. Does Your two mean, years recovery cake Does is that red. mean that they're all stuck in the red room? And she's like, oh, I don't know. And the thing is, is that it's ambiguous. We don't no, know. No, but then also when you're seeing uh, the oldest brother, who's played Michael by Hughes. Dario Naharis. Yeah. Stephen... Michael Hewson. Yeah, yeah, his shoes are red. He's wearing red Converse when yeah. he's back together with his wife. Yeah. And somehow him and his wife have smoothed over yeah. their thing. So that's that's really terrifying. Their relationship. That's really nightmarish. The idea that they never escaped, the house ate them, and they and just they're all lost. Stuck together. They're all stuck dead. And then I think also <coughs> Theo and whatever also have a red thing too, because Theo ends up with this chick. I don't know, maybe. From a relationship. We'd have to go back and look. I want to rewatch it. But there's a million it. blog articles yeah. jerking this off. So, I, yeah. I want to rewatch it, but it's kind of scary. So, like, yeah. I kind of need a break from it. Like, because it is honestly kind of disturbing. Um, but, um, I hope not. That's so mean. That's no, mean. I, don't think it's, I think it's cool. Why is it cool? They're all trapped in this no, nightmare I think it's a house. Happy I don't believe How? This bullshit. Because they're all together. No, I think they're cool. I th- I but they're all no, together in the nightmare I don't think house. They're dead. I think it's. I think oh. it's all bullshit. Oh, I think it's all bullshit. Okay. I think it's the happy ending. I hope. I don't know. I, I think it's very much the inception thing. Where I, think, don't know, I, th- I think. I think that's know, just. I, know, I think that, know. that red that lingers on, I think is just a, uh, a uh, visual metaphor that the house is still in them and is still. They're talking about... That is still a part of them, but they found a way to make it work for them. They're talking about doing a season two, and... But they're going to go totally new new family, new new time period. Because I was about to say, like, I wonder how you could do the cranes again. I don't think you could... I I think if anything, they'll just tie them back in. Yeah. You know, in in the shared universe. Because the the house is so old, it could be... If they do that horrifying thing where they're all actually just stuck in there, and that they all just tie it in there, that would be really depressing. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where it's more about the fact that 
if it's true and they're all stuck in the house, it's really cynical because these people suffered so much. You want this family to get some semblance of happiness. But I and don't you think feel the... like their father and their mother sacrificed for them yeah. to, to to do this and it's like unfair. But you I, know? I don't think that the heroic tones that the show was projecting and its heroic moments but then again garner that this is ending. the same guy that did absentia mm. and absentia okay absentia is, is his early film and it, it with his first wife it's very slow and it and you kind of like are where is this going and it's creepy and unsettling but then the end is like a gut punch because basically it's about this evil tunnel and things disappear in it um, and weird stuff starts happening because this woman's husband goes missing and she starts to see him and then they're, she, they see something else. They are running in the, tr- in the tunnel one day and they stumble across, she, one of the older sisters stumbles across a guy and he's like, you can see me and like, um, and he says something like, it must be sleeping and like, that's very disturbing. And it's actually plays by Doug Jones. Ooh. I think that's one of the reasons why, I'm, truthfully, like, Mike Flanagan kind of got legitimacy because he was able to kind of capture Doug Jones. Mm-hmm. And apparently Doug Jones' whole reason for doing the movie was because he didn't have to wear 50 pounds of makeup. He could just be himself. Um, and as, it was like, as a, like, a, was like a day's work. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. So basically the end of Absentia, you find out that there are these evil creatures that live in the tunnel. And they steal shiny things and people. And they want to steal her because her husband was there. Whatever, they're fixated on her. Or because they walk in the tunnel, they get fixated on you. The sister tries to save her sister. Um, her, and by the way, the sister that's taken is pregnant. The sister tries to save her sister by yelling, I'll trade, I'll trade. Right? And then all of a sudden, you just hear this terrible squelching noise. Damn. And you That's realize... That's the exact same ending as... Yeah. as and you realize... Oh, Timmy, this is the exact same ending as Holly Wong. Yeah. I'll and trade, I'll trade. I'll trade, I'll trade. It does the hell out of But you realize that what they traded was the fetus... The baby. ...of the mother and not the mother, and then she gets taken by this terrible creature, and then she forever has to be stuck in this veil of the world between worlds where this horrible nightmarish thing is like has her we don't know what it's doing but whatever it is it's not good and it's really scary and depressing and gross yeah. and so to me if somebody's capable of making an ending like that they're capable of making this whole family trapped in that yeah. terrible nightmare house what's funny is that mike flanagan made this with his first wife while she was pregnant yes i know right <laughs> anxiety much sir oh. like he was like i don't want to be a baby father you know like um yeah i'm sure she didn't appreciate any of that so it well, could, not anymore, so. that's true. It could be that it is a cynical ending, or maybe he's kind of learned a little bit of hope, or maybe he's just a jerk, and these people are trapped in this nightmare. No, I think he's just a great filmmaker, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna catch that's it. On him that's just it. Spoiler section already has uh, spoilers for Absentia and Helena Hill House. It doesn't need... Uh, we put spoilers. Spoilers for Mike Flanagan's life, too. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a jerk like he's a personal <laughs> jerk. I'm saying in terms of storytelling, he's a jerk. We you love know? you. We love you, Mike. Yeah. High five. Um, any last closing thoughts on this televisual horror vision podcast thing? No, I have no other thoughts. This was a very pleasant surprise. I like this uh, this topic. Whoa, she likes she likes topics. I have been your host, Stephen. And I have been Danny. You can reach us on the Twitter via at Vundablog or at Vundacast or just click the links by our host name and those will be our personal Twitters. Then you can also check us out at Vundablog.com to see everything that we do. Support our Kofi. Check out Smash.Miami. Throw them some money. Go check out a gathering first Monday of the month. Um... Also, make sure to check out at Midnight Hounds on Instagram and at Vundablog on Instagram. Give us a follow. Subscribe to us on iTunes if you don't. Leave us a review. Tell your friends. And uh, remember, kids, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> but if you didn't fix it, don't break it. <laughs> very, very astute. 
Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name.